One of the most enjoyable forms of summer carp fishing is float fishing. Watching the fish come up and take baits off the surface is just so exciting. Before we go fishing, let's just run through a few of the rigs that I use and we'll look at the tactics. As loose feed, for getting the fish up on the surface, I generally use the floating carp pellets. I usually start baiting with small koi type sticks. Once the fish are feeding well on the smaller pellets, I start introducing larger size. I normally use the 11mm pellet. It's a size that will fire out well and it's very easy to copy on the hook with a pop up. I always keep float fishing rigs very, very simple. I see a lot of things in the magazines there's hair rigs, elastic bands, everything else. I actually stick the bait on the hook. Simple case, just nothing on the end of the line, just the hook on the end of the line. I lightly nick the bait on. This is a pop up, which is my preferred flow to fishing hook bait. Tease it up to the eye, and that's it. The way that hangs in the water, obviously the bait's buoyant, hook points down, and any fish, even just gently mouthing it, they're getting hold of that hook. I see a lot of people in the magazines who use very, very small hooks for float fishing. Uh, I've never really found that to be necessary. I tend to use, that's a size 4. Uh, as long as the hook isn't sinking the bait, I like to get away with a, with a bigger hook. I really do think you print more fish that way. The reason I like to use pop-ups rather than a mixer or the carp pellets on the, on the hook is that they're a different colour. It's so easy to see which your hook bait is amongst those of others. From underwater, most colours are the same, they just come across as a dark silhouette. So depending what colour water I'm fishing in, if I'm fishing over the shadow of trees, I'll use a bright bait like this. If I'm fishing in silver water in open water, I normally pick a darker hook bait. Sometimes a carp can get a little bit wary of a, a different shape bait like that amongst the free offerings. It's a simple case with a pop-up. Just trim the sides off. You can make it whatever shape you want. I often square these off when fishing with biscuits and pellets. Try and make them a little bit more pellet shaped. Again, you'd release a lot more flavour out of that. You can make it whatever shape you want. Spend as much time as you want on that one. But now we have a more conventional pellet shaped bait. Using a sharp modelling knife, you can flatten the bottom off if you want. But the important thing is having that hook hanging directly below the bait. Wherever possible, I always freeline floaters. I always try and get the fish as close to me as I can. I find the double splash of a controller going in there, which gives you the added weight for casting, it puts the fish very much on edge. A freeline bait, you can get it amongst fish. It sometimes alarms them, but it certainly doesn't scare them the same as a controller going in. Sometimes, however, the fish are that little bit further out, and you need to use a controller. Again, very simple tactics for that. Hook link, I never float a fish with a hook link less than about six foot. The only bit of terminal tackle I have tied onto the line, the little drenin ring there, and the controller I have with a piece of silicon tube in through the eye. Nice drab coloured controller. I still make controllers myself, I prefer them long and thin like that. I've got all different sizes. There's a lead weight glued in the bottom. With that style, it not only goes into the water much quieter, it also lifts out the water easier on the strike. With the line threaded through the tube, pull the controller up to the ring and simply jam the tube over the ring. Very, very simple and also very, very safe. So let's go float fishing and see if we can catch one. <laughs>